Welcome to another day where we are attempting to paint 31 animals in 31 days. It is officially very likely I will probably get to 20 paintings within 31 days, not the full 31. My bad, I can't rebrand all my videos now, but that is what it is. Maybe later in this year, I'll go back and fill in our 11 missing animals, but we're gonna try and get to 20. It's, it's good. Anyway, if you wanna see how I painted the blue poison dart frog, the link is gonna be above in the card. And today we are going to paint a axolotl. So a lot of people don't really know what axolotls are, uh, but we are going to talk about some fun facts about the species while painting is kind of a, double storyline in this video. So it's not just going to be about the art tips, it's also going to be about facts about the animals. We're going to stick with a black background for the axolotl and we're just going to get to it. They're, they're so fun. So I'm excited to tell you a bit more about the species and without further ado, we're going to go start painting it. Okay, this one was really fun. I really enjoyed painting a salamander. I thought it was a really good addition to the challenge and what a unique salamander to choose. So right now I am filling in its caudal fin that runs along the length of their body. Most salamander species lose this during metamorphosis when they kind of get more adapted from water to land. So it kind of resembles like how a tadpole also has a caudal fin and then it gets absorbed into its body when it becomes a frog. Kind of a similar thing happens in this uh, situation normally with salamanders. But axolotls are unique because they maintain their aquatic form throughout their life and they maintain their adaptations for living in water and are just able to reproduce in water, which is super cool. So we're working on the body and it's really tricky painting transparent animals. So there's a lot of tricks that I use for this, mainly adding more and more of the background color, which in this case is black, to the paint. That is kind of how we get this kind of translucent look in the body of the axolotl throughout it when I'm painting it. And I really wanted to make the face and head really stand out. Uh, this pigmentation that I had in uh, kind of a few reference photos that I was combining here and kind of creating my own version of it as I couldn't find a really strong reference to go off of. They had this beautiful pink coloration and I wanted to make sure it was really bright and we had a lot of contrast as if it's just poking out from a murky lake bottom. So yeah, we're blocking the colors and doing some blending on its face. I'll be going back in later and working on the eyes and the mouth. I'm recording this retrospectively since I've posted this one on social media. If you want to be friends on those platforms, feel free to check them out. And a lot of people were wondering what Pokemon this was, like if this was like a fantasy creature, which is really kind of funny because the amount of diversity of animal species that we have on Earth can just be quite shocking sometimes. Axolotls are definitely a fun representation of what nature can kind of just create and evolution's like amazing. And with the front legs, this was another kind of trick in transparency. So really trying to get the balance of how much paint to put in versus the black and how saturated to make it to really kind of see it blending off into the distance. They do have web feet, which is really kind of fun to get to play around with. Just trying to get it just slightly a few shades off of black to see how transparent we could get those very fine membranes and the edges of its body. And my favorite part, as always, is getting rid of the chalk detailed lines. So this is a lot of dry brush blending where I'm adding a bit of color in and then wiping the excess paint off my paintbrush and using kind of just a dabbing motion to smooth out that coloration. And this is how I can get some of my smoother blending. I'm also not too worried about the edges because as the background is just black paint, I am able to go back and clean up the edges at the end and you can kind of see me loosely staying within the chalk kind of design that I had sketched out. And then I go back and erase the chalk afterwards. And then that also allows you to kind of really polish up that edge there. It's really satisfying kind of going around and getting rid of the chalk and cleaning up the edges with black and making sure everything stands out and really pops. So now we're getting into the face details. It's got a very cute little mouth with the pretty sweet expression. Axolotls, to talk more about them, 
they have an amazing healing ability where they're actually able to regenerate body parts like gills and limbs. So they're used extensively in scientific research. And in the wild, they are an endangered species, largely due to pollution. They are native to Mexico. Now we're on to the eye expressions. They're big doe eyes. And just kind of really polishing up some of the blending work that we're gonna do in here. So we're smoothing out the gills before we're getting into their final little details. And of course, the dots on the eye is my absolute favorite part of all my paintings. It brings such a life. I always do a double dot for different animals like this. So now we are starting the gills. This is so amazing because external gills usually disappear and are lost during metamorphosis. So when a salamander species matures into adulthood, they become more land orientated and they lose a lot of these features that young salamanders have. So the exotal lives in water their whole lives and they maintain their gills. So science has been able to simulate metamorphosis in exolotls and then they look like other salamander species that are closely related. but it doesn't occur naturally in the wild. And it's a fascinating research topic, so I highly recommend to read about it and learn about it a little bit more. So painting the gills was just such a fun final touch. I did save it to the end because I really wanted the vein details to happen over top of the gills at the very end. And once that kind of blending on the gills had been finalized, and the little filaments that are breaching out from the main kind of stalk of the gill were also very, very fun to paint. I went over them a few times trying to get them really bright and saturated as much as I could so that they would really stand out and pop against the uh, background and against the body. So I added a lot more red and orange tones to the gills than I did for the rest of the body where we kind of really stayed in like a cool pink purple tone and the gills were just really fun to add the detail to this animal. So if you came here because you love axolotls, that's awesome. If you have just watched other videos on my channel and wanted to see what I was painting next and discovered this species, that's also awesome. I highly recommend everybody to go and check out a couple different videos on YouTube on this platform about axolotls. There are a lot of videos on the science behind them, on their endangered species status. And with the final polishing details on the edges of their gill, we will wrap up this video here. I hope you enjoyed this video of me painting an axolotl and giving some tips for how to paint transparent bodies, as well as learning a little bit more about this super unique animal. A uh, true great member for the series as the diversity of life is the theme. And next up, we are returning to our avian world. So we're gonna have another bird species coming up after this. If you're enjoying this series and want to check out more videos in the playlist, it's going to be linked below. And hit that subscribe button if you want to stick around and see what else we're going to have cooking on this channel this year.